Planning Lighting Commission meeting to order. Um, we need an approval uh, or uh, corrections to the minutes of the following meetings. meeting minutes. Uh, regular commission meeting held on March 13, 2019. I move to approve the minutes as written. Second. Okay. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody against? All right, action item, city band concert sponsorship request. This was, uh, we've been doing this the last several years. I think we started doing it with uh, Mike Phillips mm -hmm. bringing it to our attention. So uh, I think it's worthwhile sponsorship and we generally have folks there that need to greet and stuff. And stuff out as well. So. Oh, good. There's usually someone in attendance. Okay. I like the idea. It's for two hundred fifty dollars. Yes. Okay. I move to uh, sponsor the city band concert for two hundred fifty dollars. Okay. I second that. Okay. Any other discussion? If not, all in agreement. Please say aye. 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 No? Uh, okay, safety committee um, minutes. safety training going this week? Uh, it was this morning. Okay. <laughs> it, went, it went very well. The crew was nice and engaged. Is, uh, is this an annual reminder type training or just? Yeah, I usually try to plan the excavation training for around this time, uh, usually in the spring, besides with winter coming to tomorrow possibly, then back to spring. Uh, it's usually the guys are out digging a lot more, so right. we like to have that reminder every year. And then respirator we need to do every year as well for fit testing uh, for the guys at the well houses and everything too. So. Okay, good, thank you. Anybody else? Any, any other questions? If not, line superintendent report. Thanks for the explanation of the, the large other category. Yeah. And the five fires, were those related or separate? All separate. Really? Yeah. That's unusual, isn't it? It is. OK. Yeah. Any comments on what you've seen? Uh, and I don't know where that was, where all those poles went down? Yeah. I, what? I believe it was in Seattle. I haven't heard what the determining factor was. It was a mile of line, so brand new. It, it almost looked like the, it almost looked like, and it wasn't like they were coming out of the earth. I mean, it was like they snapped like three feet up or something. Yeah, yeah. I haven't heard what the cause was, but oh, okay. it was a mile of line. Wow. Some pretty good video of that from what I hear from our guys. I haven't actually watched it yet. But yeah, I've well, actually they, pulled you know, going through the bars and everything. Yeah, you can see it, but it doesn't doesn't. There's no indication of what. Like a huge, I'm huge assuming wind. The pole broke somewhere, and then once they all get moving, they break pretty easy. Oh, okay. A lot of weight. Dominoes. Okay. Josh, are you able to explain that one communication complaint that came in? Yeah, that was uh, a communication interference complaint. Uh, generally, a broken insulator. That's what it was in this case. Okay. So it creates a lot of radio noise. I was going to add, if that's the one I'm thinking of, um, the guy's got new infrared cameras, little handhelds, and that came in handy. The um, trouble truck was able to go to the pole, put the IR camera there, and see the hot spot on the insulator where it was actually cracked and leaking. Okay, so, good. so it actually worked very well. Yeah. But that, that resulted in a, a customer complaint about? Charter Communications. Oh, okay. I mean, their customers are okay. a lot of interference. Okay. And mm -hmm. they really hard to find, so with the yeah. higher camera, they found it right away. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. Cool. Any 
Anything else? If not, the uh, water department report. Are we done with frozen services now? Yeah, we feel pretty good. We actually uh, sent out letters for the people who had water running and they could turn them off again. So okay. we've done a couple digs in. We haven't had any frost on the ground. Okay. You may see some or a shaded area or something, yeah. but for the most part, it's gone. I just want to thank you, Dale, and your crew for trying to maintain those water break uh, sleep patches. Oh, thank you. We'll pass that on to the guy. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, if not, the customer uh, support uh, report. <laughs> Jeff, thank you for assisting the water department with uh, notices given out in March. Yeah, everyone kind of uh, got together and, and got it done and um, went out well. And I think there was quite a bit of uh, response last week on those letters in that area to, for people checking to see if they had lead services or just wanting someone to come in and verify if it is lead or not. So okay, good. Yeah, was, that, was this the lead service? Yeah. Um, is that that these services may be led? Is that a certain parts of the town? Correct. Back in, I think it was 2015, we got that grant from the DNR to help people on the private side of their service to uh, help fund, replace that, and get copper or something in there. Um, at the time, we were only funding up to $2,000. Um, haven't had that many takers on the, the program itself. I think we had about seven people that did it. Um, internal discussions, we decided to increase that amount to $4,000, which is approximates to about the full cost of doing one of those. Um, knowing that this money is there for our customers, you know, up and through the end of the year. So we wanted to get people to be aware of it and use that money if possible. So um, we just kind of resent out the areas that were approved by the DNR um, for this program, um, which was about a thousand letters that had to go out on the east and west side combined. So then is there a testing program? Is it going to go out and actually test? Um, yeah, we did send like a, a flyer. Adam did a really good job with a flyer to show, you know, here's what galvanized looks like. Here's how you can tell if you have galvanized versus copper versus lead and just kind of the different things. And then if they go through that process and still have questions, they gave Adam a call. And I think we probably six or seven properties we went to and looked at. Send the guy out to take a look at to verify what it is. Yeah. So. Just to make sure. That's the right answer. Yeah. Good. Anything else of customer service? If not, the uh, director of finance report. Well, thanks for all the updates in the number of the different places on the, uh, the rate case company discussions. It's good to have that background information on where that's going. Right. Uh, the water rate case. Mm -hmm. um, they said that they were they, they uh, found resistance to that because somewhere in the state they got a 21 percent increase. Correct. And the residential customers got 1.4 percent increase. Um, and you, it, it kind of sounds that you guys kind of found some some middle ground on this, or or made them happier that. Well, I think the, the, it kind of came down to they don't want to have that surprise again um, in Wisconsin Rapids like they did um, in the other communities. And we kind of reiterated that that wasn't our intention at all to, you know, kind of put the burden on the industrial customers. Um, the, the Public Service Commission goes through and does a cost of service study to say, you know, for this class of customers, 
it costs you X amount of dollars, so you need to recover that much money through your through your residential rates. So um, we did actually get a, a initial run through of the rates um, late Monday, and um, the the percentage um, would kind of be in line with where we'd want that industrial increase to be. So we owe them a call back yet? Are you going to call them back? Yeah. Not yet. Well, we told them we'd call them back when we got the rate design finalized. And technically, it's not finalized. We're still looking at fire protection and what we may want to change within that. And once we get that all set with the PSC, then we'll call them back. Does the PSC have um, have the have the uh, um, I don't know if you want to call it the final word on what you charge industrial customers or high water usage customers? They do. They do. I mean, pretty much all of our classes of customers. Do they usually view it as charging them quite a bit more than a residential customer? I don't think typically they do. So I'm not sure what happened um, in this particular instance why the industrial class ended up with a larger increase. Um, but that's, that shouldn't be the case with our rate case, looking at the initial um, rates we did get from the Public Service Commission. To treat and distribute water for an industrial customer, there's no real other difference to a residential customer, is there? Other than, I mean, the size of the pipe that you need to get there um, to upsize that to make sure they have the flows they need. And do we have, uh, with a larger size pipe, does that uh, come in with the, uh, um, administrative overhead like a one inch pipe costs this much per unit and pretty much that's how they do it you know they say you know and it's particularly um more prevalent with the public fire protection charges out there where you typically have smaller pipe if you didn't need those fire flows if there ever was a fire um, so they use that quite a bit too in the public fire protection charges when they calculate that cost so soon you'll be contacting them and Yep, we're hoping, um, we had a, I had a discussion um, right before this meeting with the Public Service Commission and they were going to kind of work through our, our um, request on the public fire protection at that point. I think if, if that looks like what we want it to look like, um, we'll probably be pretty happy with the rates and then contact Verso and go from there. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there any other questions of Jeff? Uh, if not, the conservation manager's report. Oh, oh we want to hit the IS? Unless you want to skip Matt. Yeah. <laughs> He's here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Matt, how about you? Information? Uh, so who's Cradle Point? Never heard of him. Yeah, Cradle Point is just a company that creates a basically a cellular enabled router and it's meant to be vehicle mounted and to be used in, you know, emergency vehicles or pretty much any vehicle you if you can afford it as a residential customer, you can get it, put it in there, provide cellular internet for your for your car if you wanted to. But that's basically all it does. It just provides internet capability for a vehicle or you know, and even for a business, if they don't want to have, you know, Solaris or Charter or somebody bring internet service in, they can pay for the monthly cellular fee and put one of these devices in and they'll have Wi-Fi. So that's what they're meant to do. And we're going to take them and we're going to put them in a little cabinet, mount them on a pole with the collector unit or with the recloser, which is Todd's project that we're going to try it with. And then it'll communicate back via cellular through our internet connection here. So that's the plan. Been quite the learning process. <laughs> it's been a little bit of a learning curve, yeah. How many uh, uh, actual sites are there that you have to do this with? Is this just one or like three or something? On the, just on the metering side, we're looking at 16 sites. Okay. And seven, 17. 17 on the recloser, so over 30. Wow. That's what we're looking at. Kind of a big deal. We're only going to do half of the metering sites this year because the other part of this is the collector unit, yep. and those are those are quite pricey. So I'm doing half this year. Once we get it going, then next year we'll replace the other half. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? 
Uh, how about the conservation manager report? Well, what portion of what portion of customers are on time of day now? The, you know, been seeing <coughs> grow. Is it like five percent or percent less? Wise, I, I don't have that percent. Okay. Um, I can get it for you. But roughly, what would you uh, guess about? I believe we, we probably have 80 to 100 customers on it. Okay. okay. I'll, get, I'll get the exact numbers. So, no, it's not. As far as on a, the business and commercial side of things, that percentage would be higher. So okay. there's, I guess, a couple different percentages that I, uh, I can get you, residential as well yeah. as on the commercial business side of things. I was going to ask, are there residential customers that are on time of day? Less than the commercial in business. Less residential. Why, why, why would a residential customer need to be on time of day? Should I tell you? Tell me. It cut my, cut my total annual electrical cost by 25 to 30%. We're what? going to be correcting that with our next rate case. <laughs> PSC did not look at all our hourly intervals of residential customers and when they were consuming energy, they just arbitrarily set the on-peak yeah. and off-peak times. And there's got to be more systematic approach to it. So with this next rate case, we're going to make them go through the hourly interval data to change um, the on-peak and off-peak hours. Yeah, it's kind of, I mean, so you have what, 7 to 7, 8 to 8, or 9 to 9 mm -hmm. Correct. is your time frame. But if you set that, you have it like ours is seven to seven. So you do all of your all of your heavy electrical whatever. Do you have heavy electrical whatever? Well, I got a pool pump, I got sprinkler pump, I got air conditioning, all of those, time those to preferentially hit on it. And if I watch every month's uh, bill and I'm about twice the usage off peak is on. So and you get you get all the holidays, you get all the weekends. That's where it'll definitely benefit is in a case like you with a pool pump, realizing that, changing that practice and behavior to be on the weekends or after, say, 7 o'clock at night where it's off peak if you are 7 to 7. But 25, 30% would be the high end. We have very few customers that are above 8, 10%. Oh, really? Upstairs. Yeah, well, yeah, so, I see in your analysis, yeah. but I don't know how much they're changing their behaviors, actually. You Most know, people don't. Right. Most people don't. So, you know, that's a, when, when you, when I list these percentages, that's going back. Historically, looking at a year's worth of data from the past, and that's without no change of behavior at all. That's just looking if they were on time of day going so back the one year. The rate. Right now we got customers that can get on without changing their consumption patterns and still oh, save yeah. money. Oh, and that's yeah. not the way it should be. The way you're doing it and saving money is the way it should be. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't use a hairdryer after seven. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need one. <laughs> well, good. I was just, I, I figured, yeah, like, uh, you know, outdoor pool heater or something and yeah. you know, that was the heavy. Yeah, especially like air conditioning or whatever, you know, you cycle it or whatever. To, mm -hmm. Like I hit it, hit it, bring the house down, you know, right before mm -hmm. seven, and then it's basically good during the day. Well, that's the only thing I splurge on. I think my house is 72 all year long, 68 in the winter. So. <laughs> all right, um, any other questions? <coughs> Director of Engineering report. So were they going to start to break ground for Metalco in April? They or said April something? first, but okay. maybe they're holding off a little with the weather and okay. what it is. But I would assume pretty soon. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, general manager's report. Uh, what about the, I looks like you were interviewed by the audit team on the fraud uh, 
And what are they interested in? Uh, I told them that we didn't have any incidents of fraud or any suspected fraud. Okay, uh, do they ask you about you know, how, the, how the checkbooks handle <coughs> or how that goes through the system? Or? Not does so that, much anymore. They do does that, that come through in the audit. audit pretty much? Yeah, right? we have to give them write-ups and everything, and then yeah. they'll just make sure that's what we're doing. Okay. I heard you got a letter, too. I got a letter, too. Okay. I, I kind of said the same thing you did. <laughs> Good. We're on the same page, then. <laughs> 4.9, right? Yeah. That's the page. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, a review of accounts payable. <laughs> Just like the Justice Department with the redactions, huh? <laughs> Not as many, though. And they're not color coded. No. <laughs> Nothing stands out. <clears throat> Would somebody like to make a motion to uh, end the meeting? I'll so move. Okay. Second. All right. All in agreement? Fine. Thank yeah. you.